buddy. I hope you had a, a genuinely, authentically lovely week. I hope that you have a fun weekend ahead of you. I hope those things still mean something to you. <laughs> I hope that you still have some semblance of structure in your life where weekdays and weekends, there's an actual separation between the two and that you can find it in yourself to do the work when you're productive and do the relaxation when, you're, when you want to relax. It's a balance. It's all about bringing balance to the force, ladies and gentlemen. Is, am I right? Aren't I right? Yes, everybody, this is Dr. Baby Yoda Fauci of the, CD, of the NIH, Galactic NIH. I work not for the Empire, nor do I work for the Rebellion. I am a neutral party. I've worked for several Imperial, several Emperors over the time. It didn't matter what side they were on, whether they were on the Rebellion side or they were a Queen for a New Republic. It doesn't matter. I am apolitical. I am just a small alien with a doctor racist going on right now with the coronavirus. So if you wear a mask, it would be wonderful if you could do it. What, what, come here, come here. Am I gonna have to give you a Fauci ouchie? Am I gonna have to smack you across the face if you're not wearing, wearing your mask? I can give you a big Fauci ouchie. I hope you're doing what you need to do to stay safe and to stay six feet away from one another. I hope you're doing what you need to do to keep people that you care about safe. Incidentally, today's episode of Aristotle Full Throttle is about masks. You would, you'd want to know what the coolest masks are so that you can wear them, you can feature them around town. Because we need to stem the tide of the spread of an airborne virus called corona, novel coronavirus, COVSOS-19. COVSARS-19. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go get a new pair of glasses. I'll be back. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi, Lori. Welcome. You know, it's nice to see you here on a Friday. Bright and, bright and early, depending on where you are in the world. Really late. Other places. Today we're talking about movie masks. Some of the best movie masks. What's up, everybody, on Facebook? If you're on Facebook, check it out. You can join the Discord. I'm going to drop the Discord link in all of the chats here so that everybody can join the Discord and unify our chatting in one place. Centralize it, even. So while you're watching, you can go in the Discord and chat, or you can like, share, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. We're just kind of easing into it right now. Just a relaxed Friday, surfing on in. I got the Surf Club t-shirt on. Can, uh, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> you guys can hear me, right? Yeah, there goes the Facebook. Interestingly, I can't see the chats from Facebook on my unified chat thing here. Well, hence 8265, nice to see you here. What are you guys doing on your weekend coming up? You have any fun plans coming up this weekend? Let us know. As always, we start out Aristotle Full Throttle with the trending topics on Twitter. So let's go check out what's on, to on, on topic. Let's go check out our hot topics, shall we? How you doing? Ruth Bader Ginsburg says she has cancer again. Well, damn it. Well, damn it. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, better known as RBG, better known as Red, Blue, Green. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is a Supreme Court justice, one of the nine. And if she, she has had myriad health problems over the years recently. She's 974 years old. Me as a baby Dr. Yoda, Dr. Baby Yoda Fauci, I'm only 900 years old and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was my, was one of my, in one of my classes in alien law school. I, I, I dabbled. Okay, good. Uh, I don't know what he means by that. Who knows what he means by that, right? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, oh my god, we need her, don't we? We need her to stay alive. 
Is there any way we could freeze her or something? Good golly. She is an amazing person. You just gotta think about her history as a human being on this planet, and the fact that she's close to dying right before this president, which is the worst president ever. I don't care what your political leanings are, you have to admit he is the worst president ever. I don't know if you have to admit it. If you don't admit it, then you're kidding yourself. You're fooling yourself and trying to fool everyone around you. Or everyone around you thinks you are a fool. Ryan Gosling, why is Ryan Gosling trending? trending? Who's your favorite presidential president? Mine is James K. Polk. Woof. Ruth Bader Ginsburg announces she's undergoing chemotherapy to treat her recurrence of cancer. She says the treatment is yielding positive results and she remains fully able to continue her work in the Supreme Court. We hope so. We hope she could stay fully able. She is one of the people that we need to help balance the force on the Supreme Court. All, to all things need balance. And we need Ruth Bader Ginsburg to balance that. Guys, how are you today? We're just kind of relaxed. We're having a we're having a lazy Friday. We're having casual Fridays here at Aristotle Full Throttle. It's gonna get going, I, I, I assume. I guess I'll I'll get this party started. Remember when there was always someone who was like, "Y'all want this party started? Y'all want this party started right?" So there there had to be a a guy or a girl that was like Fergie or something that was like, "I'm going to make a party happen." Sometimes you need somebody to be there to make the party happen. I will be that person for you today. Fergie. Remember she peed her pants on stage? That was funny. Sometimes you gotta go. You gotta, when you gotta go, you gotta go. And Fergie had to go. She was so 3,000 and late for the bathroom, she peed herself. If you don't believe me, go Google it. Sometimes you're on stage and you just get overwhelmed with urine. Listen, what's going on in the in the trends, Portland? Portland protesters accuse federal agents of making arrests in unmarked vehicles. Why are they doing this? The feds, they're after us. Diggs is trending. I don't know why. D-I-G-G-S. That's David's last name. David Diggs from Hamilton. You know, it's my favorite. You know it's my Oh, you know it's my favorite. That depends. Oh, dang. That was an adult diaper joke, Lori. I got it. <laughs> What's it like? What's it like when you pee yourself on stage? Depends. Depends. Hey, Veronica, how are you? Happy Friday. You know, it could be Friday. I'm, I'm guessing it's Friday. I have technology. My watch says July 17th. Is that like Bastille Day or something? Today is, best, today is the French Revolution. You know, there's a th musical about the French Revolution called Les Miserables, and they go like this. Eh, the French, uh, French, and oh God, master, I am the master of the house. I'm the master of the house. I'm the master of the house, you know. It's not as good as Hamilton. Everybody loved Les Mis. They loved that Les Mis. It's like Les Mis, but they just sing everything in Les Mis. They sing everything. They're like, I'll be right back. I'm going to get a sandwich. And then they, they leave and they come back. I just got a sandwich. What happened to the pickles? There are no pickles left in the jar. Why is it still in the fridge? That's Les Mis. It's kind of boring. It's kind of lame. Les Mis, they sing everything. Javert, Jean Valjean, Javert, Javert, Jean Valjean, Javert. It's, it's like, come on, write a song. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote songs for Hamilton. Hamilton has songs in it. Rap songs, rap battles and songs. It's cool, it's a cool, it's a cool play. 
it's cool by definition. However, in like 20 years, like kids are gonna watch Hamilton and be like, "Oh, look at this old people stuff. Look at these old people's rapping. It's so old. Old people used to do this. They used to go flippity flippity this, flippity flippity that, flippity flippity this." That's <laughs> that's my impression of Hamilton. Flippity flippity, flippity flippity. It's good though. It's a good. It's a good. But it's for old people. Little kids are gonna watch Hamilton and just be like, this is, what is this old people stuff? Crotch the old, 90, in 50 years, there could be old people going, I remember Hamilton, uh, I tell us spying on the British government, I take the measurements information and then I smuggle it. To my brother's revolutionary covenant, I'm running with the Sons of Liberty and I'm loving it. Oh, arthritis. That's what's gonna happen. Old people rapping. Do you want to see that? I do. I'd love to see that. Just very old, very old people rapping. You know what I'm saying? Take the bullets out your guns. Take the bullets out your guns. We will move undercover and we will move as one. I know all the words to Hamilton now. <laughs> I've watched it only 576 times. Through the night, we have one shot to live another day. We will not let a stray gunshot give us away. We will fight up close, seize the moment, and stay in it. It's either that or meet the business end of a bayonet. Could you imagine that? Like a nine-year-old? Like a 90-year-old rapping. That's a, this is what I'm imagining now. I would love that. <laughs> uh, I'm just picturing someone in Brooklyn, like a 90-year-old person in Brooklyn, like Eddie Murphy in uh, Coming to America. Uh, this was when there was real music, when they had real songs. <laughs> yeah. I am inimitable. I am an original. It's a good. It's a good musical. Am I right, shy, shy, dumb? I want to see that right now. You know what? You're gonna see it in 50 years. Lori 3040 prefers Wicked. Lori 3040 is like, I prefer Wicked. You know what? That's cool because Wicked is also, that's a musical that's from a different point of view. You know what I saw? I saw the sequel to Peter Pan recently at, at the Pantages a few years ago. It was actually pretty good. I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I don't really remember anything from it, except that there was a gay pirate. But that was funny. Um, that was really funny. Oh, it was the one where, yeah, Finding Neverland or whatever, where they put on the play of Peter Pan inside the play. is cool. Duck Soup and Young Frankenstein. <laughs> I could just picture that with a uh, take the bullet out your gun. What? The bullets out your gun. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a, a cartoon of this. The Hamilton in f 55 years, when everybody's 75 years old. I'll call you Teresa, Teresa. I'll call you Teresa so long as you don't call me late for dinner. There's so many name jokes I know because my name is Aristotle. Everybody's like, your name's really Aristotle. Yes. Your parents named you that. Yeah. That's on your birth certificate. Yes. This is a Hannibal Burris joke, by the way. Why did you just ask me the same three thing three times? Why did you just ask me that three times? Am I a dad? No, I just look like one. I just play a dad on TV. I just tell dad jokes. <laughs> if that's a dad joke, then dads are hilarious. That's what I say. If you think that my joke reminds you of your dad, then I think your dad is hilarious. You know what? I should make a, 
an album cover. The album cover for Aristotle Full Throttle is going to be the album cover for Bad, like Michael Jackson's Bad, where he's got all the the, the belts and buckles on his like his being, and then it says Bad and like spray paint, except it's gonna say Dad in spray paint. It's gonna say Dad jokes. People say that Dad jokes like it's an insult. They laugh though. They go ha 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 Dad jokes, right? And then you go wait a second. Is that a dad joke, or is it just a joke that you find funny, because you're laughing? So I don't know. This used to happen. I think this happens with, like, people who don't appreciate humor sometimes. Or sometimes people, they want to find a very specific type of humor that makes them laugh. Maybe they like someone watching someone hit themselves over the head with a frying pan or slip on a banana peel and fall into a gutter. That's their sense of humor. Fine. Maybe they want to see someone put their hand under their arm and go like this all day. And you're like, okay, everyone's got something that makes them laugh, right? But then when people go, dad joke, it's like a backhanded compliment because you go, wait a minute, is it like, are you saying it's a dad joke because you like it? Or are you saying a dad joke because you're insulting me because you want to give me a backhanded compliment? Listen, do you know how much harder it is to come up with dad jokes when you're not a dad? I have to give birth. I'm like, I am a mother. I give birth to dad jokes like a mother. The mother of all dad jokes. That's, that's going to be the liner notes of my album. You do not care for slapstick comedy. I do enjoy a good dad joke, though. What is a dad joke? Let's define dad joke today on Aristotle Full Throttle. Today, what we shall attempt to learn... So what is a dad joke? Now, a dad joke, to me, is a joke. <laughs> I think dad jokes are jokes that make people laugh, that they are surprised that they laughed at, because they're upset. They're like, I don't, I'm upset that I think that's funny, because I don't know if that's cool to like or not. It's okay to like everything. It's okay to like nothing. I just want to know what a dad joke is. And how many kids am I have, gonna have to have in order to be a, an official dad joker? I do like jokes though. I like all kinds of comedy. Sometimes it's risque comedy, you know? There's comedians that are like, F this and F that and, and mf -er and kiss my big black stuff. <clears throat> That's me quoting Eddie Murphy from Raw when Eddie Murphy was making fun of Bill Cosby. One of the best moments I've ever seen on TV, guys. You know Bill Cosby, rapist extraordinaire? Bill Cosby is in jail where he should be. And it's funny because when Eddie Murphy hosted Saturday Night Live last December, Eddie Murphy was doing the monologue, and he said, in the 80s, Bill Cosby used to call up Eddie Murphy on the phone and be like, why do you have to, why do you... Eddie, why do you have to curse? I'm gonna send you a pack of Kodak film and some Jello pudding pops. I don't know what he said, but he would he would admonish Eddie Murphy and chastise Eddie Murphy for using curse words to be like using adult humor. Bill Cosby from the Cosby Show, America's dad from the '80s, would say, "Eddie, Eddie." Why do you have to use the F word and say MF for and kiss my big black stuff for you know? And then Eddie Murphy said, I have nine kids now <laughs> and I've taken time off to be a dad. And he's like, Who's America's dad now? <laughs> he's like, and he's like, and Bill Cosby is in jail. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Help, Lord Jesus, I'm falling down the stairs. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is the greatest comedian who ever lived. I, and, I, and I say that like Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is the greatest stand-up comedian because he changed, he changed stand-up comedy. Before St Eddie Murphy, there was just kind of like people in a suit and a tie going, dad jokes. How, do you, how, do, how about them dad jokes? They'd say, take my wife, please. Ha ha, you know. And then Eddie Murphy came along with dressed in leather, because it was the 80s, and he was like dancing and doing the 
the moves and you're just like, what is going? There's so much. <laughs> he wants his ice cream. I'm not even going to attempt the I got my ice cream dance. But when he describes making that hamburger that his mom would make with the big chunks of like green pepper inside the, <laughs> the patty. That was one of the most revelatory moments of my life as a child, watching Eddie Murphy describe the homemade hamburger. You don't need no McDonald's. Come home, I'll make you a hamburger. You don't need to go get no McDonald's. I'm going to make you a hamburger. <laughs> that was the hamburger that you got. It was so true. Oh, man, Eddie Murphy telling it like it is. Where is he at? Why isn't he doing stand-up? He needs to get back out there and just school the world. Seinfeld's still doing it. Seinfeld's still pretty funny, but his stuff is very structured. Eddie Murphy, you could tell, could kind of go with the moment and and get get nuts and just kind of feel the crowd out. Good stuff. One of my favorite comedians of all time, obviously, is Richard Pryor and uh, George Carlin. I feel like they're to Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, uh, Jerry Seinfeld for some for part of. Partly, I, I don't know. I like a lot of different. Hannibal Burris is one of my favorites right now. Mitch Hedberg, people who just look through the lens of the world sideways and, and see it in a whole different way. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright's one of Stephen Wright's jokes is, uh, "It's a small world. Wouldn't want to paint it. Everything is within walking distance if you have the time." His jokes are amazing. Burt Kreischer. I don't know about Burt Kreischer. I see that guy running around without a shirt, and I'm hesitant. <laughs> I'm hesitant to click on that guy. Um, a couple of my friends say that they don't really think he's that funny, but I, I, I would give every comedian a try. I just watched Jim Jeffries and was laughing the other day. His new special was funny. I like Jim Jeffries. I like Bill Burr. As far as angry comedians go, <laughs> generally angry comedians, Bill Burr's, uh, J Laurie brings up Anthony Jeselnik. Now, I'll check out Burt Kreischer, uh, Teresa, but Anthony Jeselnik is one of my favorite comedians alive right now. Because what he, <laughs> he is the darkest, he has the darkest sense of humor and writes the most perfect jokes in the most depraved way that are still funny. <laughs> he has got a way of threading that needle of the most depraved thought possible, yet still hilarious. I don't know how he does it, but he is an artist. He is an artist. His whole stage persona is great because it fits his humor. That You just hate him. And you love to hate him, and he's so funny to hate. And that's his job. He knows it, and he does it well. He understands his character perfectly. And, and everything that that guy does is, is pretty golden, I'd say. Um, good stuff. I'm glad we're talking about masks today. What are your, some of your favorite masks, guys? So one of my favorite masks is... Uh, Obviously, Darth Vader's mask is cool. Kylo Ren's mask I wasn't super into. I thought it was like... I liked it when they sewed it back together in Episode Nine, but I didn't get why they needed to. It seemed dumb after he smashed it in Episode Eight, which was like such the point of Episode Eight. I do like... the, uh... the mask from, uh... Remember, remember the 4th of no 1st of November. Kind of off topic, would you say Tony Hawk is a Michael Jordan of skateboarding? You know what? It's interesting that you said that. I would say that Tony Hawk is the Michael Jordan of Muhammad Ali's of Sean White's of snowboarding. That's what I would say. What do we got today, guys? Masks. What kind of masks? You guys getting ready for Halloween? How far in advance do you apply for Halloween approval? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, I think it means, are we going to even have Halloween parties? Maybe masks will be the required thing, and then we can actually go to 
Halloween parties. V for Vendetta, that's it. Remember, remember the 5th of November of October. Yes, the mask with the move from about that guy Rocky Dennis. What, what the, that was his name, right? <clears throat> He's from California, Southern California. That kid, he was an inspirational figure. He had a very um, tragic illness that where his, uh, I think it was either his skin or his bone continually grew, and there was just no cure for it. So it was just kind of, he was just kind of waiting to die. But he inspired so many people. He was a cool, cool kid. He was a cool kid out here in L in California, Southern California. Uh, he, I think he grew, he lived to be about 19 or so. And uh, he inspired all the people around him because he was just kind of like rolling with it. He was like, yeah, you know, I got this bone disorder and it just keeps growing. And then one day I'll, I'll just die, I guess. Really, really sad story. Played by Eric Stoltz. Famously. Eric Stoltz also, I think right after that, was in Back to the Future. And then got cut out of Back to the Future. And then they reshot it with Michael J. Fox. <clears throat> Red Ranger helmet is my favorite mask. Any Red Ranger helmet. What about, remember Rescue Rangers? The Power Rangers are pretty cool, huh? Actually, no one of the Power Rangers. Sort of. I know the yellow Power Ranger. I have an acquaintance with her. The yellow Power Ranger. I love Halloween. Getting ready for Halloween. I'm going to miss Argentina. Argentina from Beetlejuice. You're going to be Miss Argentina from Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was she cut in half? She was cut in half on the couch, right? And then Beetlejuice assaulted her in that. It was the 80s. Assault was funny back then. Uh... <laughs> That's crazy, guys. We live in a crazy world right now. Wait, Miss Argentina. Oh, you know it'd be funny to be the football team that went down in the plane crash. I'd like to be Juno one time. Just one time, have the smoke come out my neck when she's smoking. Juno. Remember her? She was their caseworker for the afterlife. I'm thinking of the woman that's sitting on that couch. Yeah, Miss Argentina. Oh, that is a good costume. She looks very dead. She looks like she died. <laughs> Why hasn't there been another Beetlejuice? Why hasn't there been another Beetlejuice? We, it's such a fun world to romp around in, isn't it? And Michael Keaton could totally come back, just put the makeup on him, and he looks like Beetlejuice. It doesn't matter that he's 30 years older. It doesn't matter. He, you put the makeup on him, just the black and white makeup, put the wig on him, and he's Beetlejuice again. I don't think anybody would have as any objection to that. I know he's coming back as Batman. He's coming back as Batman. Batman mask is actually pretty cool. If we're talking about masks, that's one of the cool masks. It's got like little pointy ears on top, like a cat. They should call him Catman. Catman do. Catman do or don't or die. Guys, we're having a great Friday, aren't we? Remember to like the videos wherever you are. Also, I'm going to drop the, I'll periodically drop the Discord link into the chats, and then you guys can jump into the Discord and we can continue to chat there. Remember to like, share, tell your friends, tell your, tell your friends, mama, about the show. We can hang out, have a good time every day at noon. Monday, I have a very special guest, Jake A. We're going to talk about. Uh, topic I'll let you know that morning but um, it's going to be an interesting topic I think why can't there be another Beetlejuice that's my question can we start a petition let's start a petition to get in Michael Keaton and Tim Burton's ears and say listen guys we need more Batmans and more, more Beetlejuices because we run out of nostalgia We've run out of nostalgia. We need some more. Star Wars got biffed by Disney. Disney really muffed that up. So why can't you guys come back and do some artistry? Do your jokes, Michael Keaton. Be a crazy self. Do all your crazy things. Tim Burton, come up with your real spindly, weird, black and white imagery. Sing some more Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte is still alive, goddammit. Why can't we just get Harry Belafonte to be in the movie? 
He could sing all the songs. Get Winona Ryder. She's popular still. Stranger Things. Get Winona Ryder back. Her kids now are exploring the afterlife. That's what it's going to be about. It's always about, you know, passing it down generation to generation. That's what they need to do. I've already got it all figured out. This is the movie right here. Uh, Winona Ryder has kids with uh, somebody. I don't know. And you get Gina Davis and Alaric Baldwin back for the movie. Or they could be themselves. Just give them, dress them in the same outfits that they wore. I, I'm, I'm down with this. Just do it. Just bring it. Catherine O'Hara needs to come back. Bring Catherine O'Hara back. You could say that her husband died. The actor who played her husband actually got arrested for, like, owning child porn. So, good. We don't need him back. <laughs> we don't need that guy back. Um, he's in jail or something. So, get Catherine O'Hara back. The guy who played Otho, I think, died, though. You could just have Catherine O'Hara make sculptures of Otho. Yeah, noon for you. It's 3.30 there. Well, Teresa, what's a good time? What's a good time for everybody? I might switch the time of the show to later in the day because I'm, kind of, I'm realizing I want to get up and maybe go, like, do some chores and errands and have some, like, maybe distance meetings during the day with people because I've realized that we've got to figure out how to live in this world responsibly. Got to wear the mask. Got to stay six feet away. You just got to do it. Just got to do it. People, I don't know, understand the resistance to it. People don't like to be told what to do. People don't understand how helpful it is to remain outdoors, to keep distant, to wash your hands. But they don't want to accept the reality of their own responsibility in this. Everybody needs to do it. Like I was saying yesterday, it's not about people saying, well, everyone else is doing it, so why should I? Because there's enough people doing it. It's like, no, we're as strong as our weakest link. And if you're not wearing a mask, you are the weakest link. Yeah, we're getting shut down again. Yeah, they shut down things because people can't follow simple instructions on on safety. I bet you if everything was... <laughs> if the whole world had sharp edges, if people were given a room full of needles and you told them to not stick them in their eyes, whatever you do, guys, don't stick these needles in your eyes. If you come back 15 minutes later, I bet you half of those people will have needles stuck in their eyes. Because this is how good we are at pandemics in, in America. Lori, thank you for sharing that video. Or <clears throat> I forgot who shared that video on Discord. I think it was Unicorn Princess. That video is hilarious. <clears throat> that video is... This is my real voice. Sorry, I was... I made this elbow. Uh... No, that video is hilarious because I actually love those two dudes. The, those dudes that play like Chad Kroger, whatever it is. Those guys do that stuff all of the time. Now, she's referring to a video that where these two dudes were in uh, Huntington Beach and they were handing out masks to idiots not wearing them going, Oh, hey, we know there's a mask shortage. Here's a free mask because they were being sarcastic because people are deliberately not wearing their masks. And they were like, Hey, you need a mask? We got them right here. They're free. I understand that you're not wearing a mask, but there's a shortage. Here's a, here's a free mask. And people are fighting them on it because they're just angry people. A lot of these people are dying, too. You know, not a lot, but there was a guy. It's a series of uh, videos, but I'll just finish the story about the Chad Kroger guys. Those two guys go to City Hall and Town Hall all of the time and then pull stunts like that. They'll, they'll say that what they want is an ice cream machine in the center of town or something, and then they'll go on for 10 minutes reciting a hilarious speech about how important it is to give everyone free ice cream or something. It's really great. They use their, they, they take their civic duty seriously, or at least they, they spend time working, <laughs> working on exercising their rights as citizens by going down to the town hall. And you might consider it a waste of time, but they're allotted their five minutes. They can say their statement, and it's usually highly entertaining, and the board kind of rolls with it each time. But it's usually televised, or you could see it on local 
streaming TV and stuff, and you'll see these guys just being jackasses in town hall. It's, like, super cool if we could just get, like, an ice cream machine in the middle of town. So, like, my favorite is strawberry. <laughs> it's amazing. Check it out. The Chad Kroger guys. But, uh, yeah, some people are just totally resisting the, the mask situation. I didn't like Johnny Depp and Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Where are you, Teresa, if it's 3.30? You're on the East Coast, or you are Are you in Brazil? Brazil? I don't know. Florida? Florida, man. I feel like Florida man, you know how Florida man is a headline? Florida man eats live alligator eggs or something. You know, the, the, it's always like some weird Florida man dot 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 runs down street naked and on fire into a Denny's and orders a Rudy Tooty fresh and fruity. That's usually, that's usually what happens after you see Florida man. But I think also Florida comma man dot dot dot. Is, should just be a statement like, Florida, man. Florida, man. You know what I mean? I think you know what I mean. This is Carl Weathers. I've not made an appearance all week. We've been running on Venice Beach together. And at the end of that run, we run really fast and it's in slow motion at the same time. Rocky and I have been hugging and jumping up and down in the water all week long. Now, Rock, you have to face Club Lang, and I'm going to train you. I'm going to train you in South, in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. You're going to come to my gym, and you're going to train like I did. I'm referring to Rocky Three. Hey, Rock, let's go running on the beach. That's pretty much, <laughs> Rocky's like, hey, shouldn't we go sparring or something? Yo, why don't we go into the gym and like spar or so? Maybe I'll go swimming. And then Carl Weathers is like, no, Rock, I need to run on the beach. Let's go running on the beach together, Rock. Come on, Rock. You don't want to run on the beach with me? No, I thought I would try boxing, you know, like practice boxing. Maybe I could bounce a handball off the floor or something. That seems, you know, like, that's how you train that boxing? Listen, Rock, the way we train at boxing in Los Angeles is we play handball and we run on the beach. That sounds, uh, that sounds a little stereotypical, though. Listen, Rock, you wrote this script. You wrote this script, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, no, you know, after Rocky, the first one, I wrote all the Rockies. <laughs> Rocky, the first one. Red, Red Town. You are 90 minutes from Tampa. Oof. I am sorry, Teresa. I can't help you there. Florida, man. Yeah, Tampa is... Florida is one of the most messed up states I've ever been to. And I've been to 46 states. I've been to 46 states, and I've never experienced a weirder climate politically. I mean, the beaches are beautiful. The food is great. The people are aesthetically... There are some people on the beaches where they're you just, you know... It's all they care about, so I guess they're a bit vain and narcissistic. But, you know, Florida, man, it's bad. It's, like, weirdly politically awful hey rock do you like cuban food rock how about we go to florida and run on the beach there yo i don't know i don't know that sounds a little crazy to me i just want to like fight this guy club a lane remember that rocky three <laughs> my, one of my favorite moments in rocky three is uh Clubber Lang, what's your prediction for this fight? My prediction? Pain. <laughs> That's great. That's classic, guys. It doesn't really get any better than that. My prediction? Pain. Rocky 3 stars Mr. T, who's probably like the nicest 
most jovial figure in the history of like muscular dudes with mohawks who can punch faces yet mr t in that movie is such a is such a stick in the mud he's such a villain he's such a bad guy there's nothing redeeming about him he's always angry even if he's just always angry you just don't ever like him he was he wasn't an actor before that sylvester stallone saw him as a nightclub bouncer and was like, I like the way this dude looks with all his gold chains and his feathers hanging from his ears and his mohawk. I'm going to train him up. And he, and he made Mr. T like super, like they trained together. Hey, Rock, why don't we train with Mr. T? Uh, and they, uh, yeah, they trained together. And they, they made that movie. It was a good movie. Rocky 3, it's fun. It's bite-sized. It's not as good as Rocky 4, though. Rocky 4 is the best. You feel so triggered every time you re leave your house. Yeah, sometimes people... Listen, Teresa, I know you feel triggered because you live in a red town 90 minutes outside of Tampa. Well, what you could do is... Move out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, what you can do is just realize that some people just want to trigger you. Some people just like that feeling that they're getting under someone else's skin. That's what they like. They like to do that. They're not really interested in creating peace or harmony. They're not really interested in understanding what's true and what's not. They're not really interested in looking inward and understanding their part to contribute to society. What they want to do is ha they want they get off on you having that feeling of anxiety, of trigger. They, that's the thing that gets them feeling like they're alive. They're like, I'm alive inside. I made someone upset. Now I feel alive inside. I've got my hit. I got my little, I got my little uh, fix for the day of upsetting Teresa. That's what they want. The best thing you can do is not give it to them. That's the best thing you can do. Just don't give it to them. Don't give them the satisfaction. I'll never be satisfied. Get it? That was a that was a line from Hamilton. I could bring everything back to Hamilton. <laughs> God, I hope you're satisfied. So good. My singing voice is incredible. I can't wait to audition for Hamilton. Uh, <laughs> I'm just the most incredible singing voice. I don't know if you've heard it yet. I I still haven't. My whole life, I haven't heard it yet. But I know it's there. <laughs> one day, one day it'll happen. One day it'll all just click. Um, Ryan Gosling is trending. You guys remember that mask from Donnie Darko? The freaking rabbit mask? Oof, that's scary. That was a cool movie. I saw Donnie Darko at Sundance Film Festival. First time it was ever shown. Drew Barrymore was there. The director was there. It was cool. They were talking about the movie there. It's, it's, if you ever get the chance to go to Sundance, it's actually pretty accessible. If you could just drive there. I, I think I might drive there. January if things are open but you can go to these festivals and hang out and get tickets to see movies with all of these celebrities and they'll talk about it and the movie tickets are 10 bucks 12 bucks you go check out the movies and the, the filmmakers are there to talk about it and I saw Donnie Darko and I remember seeing that rabbit mask for the first time going um, that's the stuff of nightmares isn't it I'm gonna be dreaming about that my the next two weeks just out of nowhere that rabbit's gonna sneak up on me isn't it <laughs> <laughs> that that rabbit is a scary ass rabbit creepy and the guy takes the mask off and he's got the thing stuck in his eyeball creepy i am in california yes i am in california teresa i am in los angeles la ciudad de las los angeles los angeles is full name by the way which i still haven't committed to memory i will though Ready? Here's the official name for Los Angeles. It is a... Uh... Wait, give me a second here. Los... People don't know this, but the full name for Los Angeles is El Pueblo, El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles. That's the name of Los Angeles. So if someone asks me, I'm gonna be real snarky. I'll be real, I'll be a wise ass. 
They say, where do you live? I'll say, el pueblo de Nuestra Señora la Reina de Los Angeles. And people are like, where is that? I'm like, L.A. <laughs> Better known as L.A. El pueblo de Nuestra Señora la Reina de Los Angeles. It's hard to remember. El pueblo, I guess that's the, the town. La Nuestra Señora, the new lady of the queen, la Reina de Los Angeles. Yeah, that's what it means. I just translated Spanish for everybody. I could be a... I could work for the UN. Listen to that translation. <laughs> slow down. If I worked at the UN as a translator, I'd be like, hey, slow down. Wait, he said something about, oh, so he said, go, go be air no government. Hold on a second. Sit this. <sighs> Wait, can you rewind? <laughs> I'd be like in Spanish lab, rewinding the tape. Wait, what did he just say? I'd be the worst translator what I'm saying. El pueblo de Nuestra Señora de la, Re la Reina de Los Angeles. Late 70s, we moved back to Chicago in 1983. Chicago, 1983, the year that Return of the Jedi came out and Jimmy James Cordova was born. Facts. These are all facts. Jimmy James is watching. Shout out to you. Y'all are watching. I hope you're happy. If you're watching the uh, reruns, that's cool. Guess what? We're going to maybe move the time of the show to a different time of the day. But some of the shows will be whittled down to nice, nice little bite-sized 10 to 15 minute clip highlights. So you can check the show out later, like those videos, share them with your friends. It'll be like the Joe Rogan experience, except when, you know, when they cut it down to just the clips of the Joe Rogan experience, except it'll be less sexist. <laughs> Hopefully. Listen, I, I joke. I kid about Joe Rogan. I, I like the guests he has on Joe Rogan. I'm going to start some beef with Joe Rogan. I'm going to get my muscles bigger, and then I'm going to like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to wrestle Joe Rogan. He's about a foot shorter than me, so I think I could take him. He'll probably kill me twice in three seconds. Anyway, Joe Rogan. I think he's got, I think he's just not aware of it. Maybe he's working on it, but he's a little bit, he's, he's definitely, he's got like this weird boys club mentality. Whenever there's a boy guest on, he talks different than when there's a girl guest on. And it's very obvious that he's got some kind of weird separation in his mind that men are, and women uh, should be treated differently in, in kind of a, uh, I don't know. I think he, it's just, he, he behaves differently about, around each of the sexes. And I find it, I think he genuinely does not value the half of the human race as much as he does the other half, which is apparent to me when I'm listening to Joe Rogan. I don't know how you feel about Joe Rogan, but I just don't like the whole boys club mentality. I'm just not into it. It's not been my thing. I like all people. I like people. I'm a people person. I don't like the boys club. I don't like the girls club. Sometimes women, there's like... Uh, I've had experiences where I noticed that sometimes, and it's just as bad as men, when like women will sit around over a glass of wine and talk about men as a utility. I got my man to do this, and I got my man to clean out the, the dumpster, and I got my man to do this. It's like, okay, aren't you partners? Aren't you guys partners? Do you, like, why, aren't you a tag team? Isn't that the way it's supposed to work? That's my ideal, anyway. Some people are like, they want a sub they want a submissive partner who just is just always submissive, not just in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? I'd appreciate it if you had this show on in the evening. I'm normally at work. Well, Teresa, since you made that request, I might just rejigger this whole process and so that it's more accommodating for you. I kid. I kid. Sometimes there'll be snark on this show. <laughs> But yeah, I am taking the pulse of the of the watchers to see what time is a good time to to uh, to redo the show. I might do it at around six p.m., six or seven p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would be I don't know, maybe even sooner, maybe even earlier than that. I don't know. It's hard to say because I I would like to have a life during the day <laughs> at some point. But I started this show probably at the end of March every weekday. And I was like, you know what? We're all locked down. 
there's we can't leave our homes. We're safer at home. So I'm going to do a show every day at noon so that I could kind of broadcast to the world and reach out to my fellow human beings who are stuck in or maybe want to feel like they're a part of a, a community or something that's regular. To keep them regular. I want it to be everyone's muse, muse licks. I want it to be everybody's metamucil, is what I'm saying. I was hoping that I could help keep everyone regular by, you know, watching this show at the same time every day. Oof. Let's see. If you had a link to the, in Discord for topics, suggestions, pick theater food. Yeah, that's a good... How do I do that, Lori? Can I add a link that can just people can, can or like a hashtag or something in the in the thing? Because I would love topic topical suggestions. Um, it would be three o'clock my time. Yeah, if I did six or seven, but I'm talking about enough time for me to get home and then maybe make dinner and then do the show. <laughs> so like six or seven my time. So it'd be nine or ten your time which is late, but you could catch it the next morning, I guess, on the rerun. But it's not as fun because we're not all hanging out together. So I got to I gotta rework this whole plan. I'll take the weekend and think about it. Yeah, exactly. I was hoping that exactly like Lori3040 says, that this would be a safe place to go without having to leave your house and where everyone is welcome and where everyone is treated with respect and fairly. That's what we want. That's the rules of this environment. Everyone's treated with respect and courtesy. And we talk about geeky stuff. You know, it's fun. Well, it's your first time watching the live stream because I normally work Monday through Friday and I'm a healthcare worker for an imaging center. Well, Teresa, thank you for your hard work in the healthcare system because I know the healthcare system is being strained right now. And you are part of that system, and you're putting in the work, and you're putting in the care, and we appreciate you for doing that. And I show my appreciation to you by wearing a mask, and I hope that people listening or anybody who's out there that may not be wearing masks listen to the show. They listen to Lori. People like her are being affected in one way or another, even if it's not... You know, even if the imaging center isn't as strained as, say, like the ICU. But it is it's part of the system, and the system is being strained. We need to help people and accommodate them and be courteous and consider the fact that we are overworking people to a point of exhaustion when we are being reckless with our behavior by not wearing a mask. It's just the truth. You should try and hit the drive home crowd. That's true. Uh, it kind of is the drive home crowd right now on the East Coast, I guess. You know, about three, three o'clock, four o'clock. But it's hard to do because it's when you're on the internet, you're everywhere in the world at the once. So you got to figure out what's a good slot. I could do six a.m., but I won't because that's early. Damn it. One of the funniest things I saw was The Rock talking about how he gets up early in the morning to work out every day. He's like, I get up to work out 6 o'clock every single morning, and I do a heavy workout. And if my competitor gets up at 5, well, damn it, I'm going to get up at 4 because I'm a competitor. And if my competitor gets up at 3, well, screw that. I'm not getting up at 2. That's some crazy BS. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I love The Rock. He's the best. The Rock is our cultural leader right now I'm wondering though Lori I like your suggestions I will take them into consideration I wonder what other masks are interesting guys let's see I'm trying to think of some some cool masks that we uh, that may not have touched upon iconic masks Famous ones. The Scream Mask from Scream. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jason. Freddy. Well, Freddy's not a mask. He's just ugly. He just got burnt up. And he's ugly and evil. 
Remember the masks in Eyes Wide Shut? Those were creepy, weren't they? That movie was creepy. Zorro, the mask of Zorro. That's a good one. Bane is my favorite. Bane is my favorite. Batman. I was wondering what would break first. Would it be your body or your mind? Your body. Uh, I was wondering what would break first. I, I love, I love Bane. Bane, he sounds like this. My favorite mask is the face hugger from Alien. Batman. <laughs> he f he went full cartoon character. I liked it. He went full dark. Is it's just a life cast mask of of uh, William Shatner. <laughs> Michael Myers mask, Teresa, is just a life cast mask of William Shatner, and <clears throat> they just cut the eyes bigger. It's William Shatner's face. That is so terrifying. <laughs> I find that hilarious. They like change the hair and they, they cut the eyes bigger and then it's William Shatner. It's just William Shatner's face. That's gotta be the one of the funniest pieces of trivia. I guess technically it's not William Shatner's likeness because they like change it a little bit, but the features, because they cut the eyes bigger yeah. William Shatner from Star Trek. It's so cool. William Shatner is hilarious, by the way. I went and saw him a few years ago with my friend David. We watched Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and then William Shatner came out and talked about it after. It was crazy. William Shatner's 940 years old, and he came out there, and he was just, like, shot out of a cannon. He's like, hey, everybody. Hey, hey. And then he told us all these stories about filming Star Trek, and uh, we were all enthralled with his charisma and his storytelling what a funny guy i hear he's t horrible to work with but apparently but he's a great storyteller Ooh, geordie's mask in star trek that's a good one laurie 3040 i always liked lavar burton and i always thought he was cool my favorite thing about geordie was this he would always be scanning something geordie always be scanning abs geordie would always be scanning something and then this was like his go-to move he'd go like well, it looks like an anomaly. And then he would like, he'd look at the camera and laugh. He'd go. <laughs> that was his move. <laughs> I loved it. LeVar Burton. He played Coup de Quinte. He played Reading Rainbow. And he played Geordie LaForge. Iconic American characters. I loved Reading Rainbow. You know, my dream as a child was to become... LeVar Burton for Reading Rainbow. So we're going to turn this show into the new Reading Rainbow, and I'm going to talk to kids. I, used to, I was a reading mentor in college for kids, for kids who were in third grade, eight-year-old kids. And I worked in a library, and they would read me books. And I, would, and I, was, I was like, I'm, it's like me. I grew up to be Georgie LaForge. I grew up to be Reading Rainbow. I was very excited. We could turn this show into Reading Rainbow for the kids, the new Reading Rainbow, Reading Rainfro with the fro. And I'll say, I'll be like, hey, kid, read me that book. What book you want to read? It was The funny thing is, as I would get the kids to read me books that I wanted to listen to. They'd be like, I want to read Harry Potter. I'm like, you're going to read Cat in a Hat. I like Cat in a Hat. You're going to read Green Eggs and Ham, because that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like, but Harry Potter. I'm like, nah. Today... We're going to read Alexander and the No Good, Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. That's what we're going to read. And you're going to like it. I mean, I'm good. I'm definitely going to like it. Get out of here, kid. No, nah, I'm kidding. I like kids. They're fun. Kids are... I always say kids are the best because they have not yet learned to smile politely. They will tell you what's on their mind. They won't go, oh, that's nice. Kids won't do that. Anyway, Instagram, I'll see you on Monday. Instagrams. I forgot to give Instagram the warning that we were ending soon. But guys, yeah, that's my favorite thing about kids is they're just so open and honest. And then they get to about 13 or 14 and they start to get all like insecure and self-conscious. And then all the fun like 
realness goes away or it gets covered up, and then we, gr we become adults that are all protected and trying not, not to show our cards. But kids show their cards. Kids are great. They'll just tell you what they're thinking. This show is a stream of consciousness, and I'm trying to use that to my advantage to try to get in touch with you guys directly and my own thoughts directly. Oh, sorry, I just I was looking at this mask of Hannibal Lecter. That's my favorite. The yeah. Hannibal Lecter mask. The hockey mask, the hockey goalie mask or whatever that is. That's my favorite mask from the movies. So he doesn't bite your face off. But this show is a stream of consciousness and it hopefully it connects with you guys. I find it very therapeutic to just state my thoughts as they come to me instead of holding them back. So I'm trying to be like a kid, like an eight-year-old. <laughs> an eight-year-old who just says, I'm gonna dance now. Kids are great. They'll just start dancing. They're like, it's dancing time. And you're like, what's happening? We're dancing now? Okay. If only we had that freedom as adults. But we can, I guess. Sometimes adults annoy me. Because adults have ulterior motives. Kids don't. Kids are like, I want ice cream. Because I would like to eat the ice cream. Adults are like, I want ice cream because I want to have world domination. And you're like, wait a minute. You don't really want ice cream. You just want to control all the ice cream. You just want to redistribute the ice cream as you see fit. That's what you want, adult ice cream wanter. Kids are like, I want ice cream because I'd like to eat it, please. <laughs> I'm just illustrating the difference between adults and children through the lens of ice cream. Cookies and cream. What's your favorite ice cream? We know where my mind is at right now. Ice cream. I just had uh, the Tonight Dough the other day. It was good. Ben and Jerry's. The Tonight Dough. It's got so many doughs in there. It's my go-to. What's your go-to Ben and Jerry's? Let, let us know, Lori3040. Or if you're watching the replay of this, just leave the comment and I'll heart it. But, uh, guys, we had another successful week on Aristotle Full Throttle. What did we learn today? I think we learned that wearing a mask is important. <laughs> we learn that every day. Today we learned it's okay, it's good to to look inward to see what you're really thinking and what you're really feeling. Oh, there's a life cast mask of Beethoven. That's interesting. You guys ever see that? It's a real life cast mask of Ludwig von Beethoven. I never knew that. Oh, and there's one of Napoleon. That guy was a jerk. I guess when they were dead, they took a life cast of these people. Wow, these, some of these people are really ugly. <laughs> Google it. Oh, wow, Lori 3040, I'll tell you, I love that Toll House cookie dough ice cream as well. Oh, the cookie, the Toll House cookie dough ice cream. I didn't know there was an ice cream. I will just eat the Toll House cookie dough straight out of the thing. I'll make like three cookies, I'll bake three cookies and then just eat the rest of the cookie dough and say, and call it a day. That's what I'll do. I've not seen the death masks of dead presidents, but I am looking at Woodrow Wilson right now. The death mask of him. Interesting face. Interesting to peer back through time to see these faces versus the paintings of these people. And some of the paintings look really accurate. Well, some of them are photographs, but some of them are... Well, I guess when they died, they just covered their face and whatnot in alginate and created a face mask. I didn't know Robespierre had a face mask. Robespierre. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton doesn't look like his face mask, but I guess he was very old when he died. Isaac Newton is an incredible figure. Think about this guy, Isaac Newton. He couldn't solve a problem because he didn't know how gravity worked, so then he figured out calculus. <laughs> he, f he invented 
he invented calculus to help solve a problem that he was working on. That's like inventing calculus to help solve a problem you're working on. <laughs> what an amazing... Oh, he died at, of a kidney stone at age 84. That's painful. Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton stuck a needle in his own eye, actually, just to see what would happen. Remember I was talking about needles earlier? Sticking them in your own eyes? Don't put Isaac Newton in that room. He'll poke his own eye out. Isaac, whatever you do, you're the most, you're the smartest human that we have. Don't stick these needles in your eye. He stuck like a whole needle right to the back of his eyeball. Temporarily blinded himself. Or he stared at the sun also. He stared at the sun to see what would happen and he went blind for like a month or four months. Not very, not a very smart move. But, you know, what did he know? He wanted to see what would happen, because nobody did that. Nobody would do that, because it seems pretty obvious, but he was like, what happens if you do? <laughs> Briars. Well, we had, a, we had a good run this week. I think we should call it a week, guys. What do you think? What are you going to do this weekend? Let me know in the Discord. We'll keep in touch. I got to check out that Japanese movie that was recommended by Chris. I keep putting it off, but I keep having things pop up in my schedule to do, so I'm trying to do them. Uh, yeah. Lori3040, where are you at? It, where is it not raining? Why is it not raining where you are? It doesn't rain in California ever. Or Southern California, it rains for a couple weeks in, like, March. But then it doesn't. Well, guys, I'm going to go make some TikToks <laughs> because my TikToks are blowing up. So if you want to follow me on TikTok, you can all do that. If you want to follow me on the Discord, here's the Discord link. I don't know if it's expired yet. Let me know if it has. I've dropped that in the chat. If you guys are on Facebook or wherever, join the Discord and create consonants. <laughs> Not dissonance. Oh, Greensboro, Greensboro, that's right. You're in North Carolina. I like Greensboro. I've played there. I've played shows there in Greensboro. I do like North Carolina a lot, actually. People, um, people give the South crap. The South has a bad reputation, and a lot of times for good reason. Let's face it. The South has a bad reputation for good reason sometimes. However, the times I've been to the South... I've met the salt of the earth. I've met some really nice people, kind, gen generous, cool, awesome people, um, particularly North Carolina. It's a cool place. I'm just thinking of um, Wilmington. My band was eating at a restaurant. Here's a story about Wilmington. My band was eating at a restaurant, and uh, the, wait the waiter, just like he's like, hey, are you guys in a band? Like, yeah. And he's like, oh, man, where are you guys playing? He, he found out where we were playing. And he gave us, like, tons of bags of, like, chips and salsa to go. Like, bags and bags full of chips and salsa and food for the road. Because he's a kind dude from North Carolina who supports musicians who are traveling. And he just thought it was cool. And he gave us food, and we were freaking stuffing our face with chips all week. Like, that guy was awesome, man. He gave us chips and salsa. We're hungry. We're skinny little rock and rollers. And we've got chips now. So when I think of places like Wilmington, I think of people like that. When I think about Rocky Mount, y'all know about Rocky Mount? I think about bands like Neuralis. There's a band called Neuralis, and these kids were the kindest kids and they were sweet and they were always sharing everything everything they did they shared everything we would go to lunch they would share their lunch they would share their food i talk about food like this because you know you're on the road you're just a vagabond you just got your stringed instrument you can stomp and clap that's your only thing that you got as a musician on the road and you meet other musicians and that and it's all an equalizer and we're all just musicians and artists hanging out together and they would share everything. They'd offer, 
they would like offer their instruments if they could. Just kind, good, cool people. And we have to remember that. Wherever you go in this country, there are good people. There are bad reputations, and there are bad reputations because there are some freaking horrible people that give those areas a bad reputation, but there are also super sweet, kind, generous folks that we should all remember. And look, you can be kind of generous yourself. Guys, remember, <clears throat> if you want to check out the description of this video, there's links to things that, where you can support this channel on, like, Patreon. Like you, Lori3040, thank you so much for your contribution. Also, you can get a mug. <laughs> you can get stickers. You can get, like, little merchandises. Stuff like this. Stuff like, uh... This up here in the corner right there. You can get the sticker. You can get t-shirts. You can get mugs. You can get different types of merchandise. You can get a case for your phone with my face on it. Just help support the, uh, help support the team. Help support the fro growth. Thank you guys so much. You're the best. You really are. The show would not exist were it not for you guys. And I appreciate that. Every day we come back. The show's going to expand. We're going to have some cool stuff in the future. We're going to have some musical-related stuff and fun and games and interaction and even maybe possibly a game show type of atmosphere where we can all participate in movie trivia and whatnot. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle, your bro in the know with the fro. And I'll see you on Monday.